Neuromyelitis Optica, Wikipedia Article Audio Neuromyelitis Optica, also known as de Vick's disease or de Vick's syndrome, is a heterogeneous condition consisting of the simultaneous inflammation and demyelination of the optic nerve and the spinal cord. It can be monophasic or recurrent. Signs and Symptoms Pathophysiology Causes Mechanism Diagnosis Variants Tumefactive lesions Differential diagnosis Treatment Attacks Secondary prevention Prognosis Epidemiology Neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorders History Research directions MOG associated NMO Other AQP4 negative variants Notable patients Currently at least two different causes are proposed based on the presence of autoantibodies against AQP4. AQP4 plus NMO is currently considered an autoimmune disease or autoimmune astrocytic channelopathy in which a person's own immune system attacks the astrocytes of the optic nerves and spinal cord. The cause of the AQP4 variants is unknown. Although inflammation may also affect the brain, the lesions are different from those observed in the related condition, multiple sclerosis. Spinal cord lesions lead to varying degrees of weakness or paralysis in the legs or arms, loss of sensation, and slash or bladder and bowel dysfunction. De Vick's disease is now studied along a collection of similar diseases called neuromyelitis optica spectrum diseases. Some cases of this spectrum resemble multiple sclerosis in several ways, but require a different course of treatment for optimal results. In 2004, NMOIgG was first described leading to the distinction between positive and negative cases. In anti-AQP positive variants, CNS astrocytes, which are the basis for the glymphatic system are the target of the autoimmune attack. NMOIgG negative cases are less understood. It seems currently that astrocytes are spared in these IgG negative cases. The main symptoms of de Vick's disease are loss of vision and spinal cord function. Optic neuritis may manifest as visual impairment with decreased visual acuity, although visual field defects, or loss of color vision may occur in isolation or prior to formal loss of acuity. Spinal cord dysfunction can lead to muscle weakness, reduced sensation, or loss of bladder and bowel control. The typical patient has an acute and severe spastic weakness of the legs or all four limbs with sensory signs, often accompanied by loss of bladder control. De Vick's disease has been associated with many systemic diseases, based on anecdotal evidence of some De Vick's disease patients with a comorbid condition. Such conditions include, collagen vascular diseases, autoantibody syndromes, infections with varicella zoster virus, Epstein-Barr virus and HIV, and exposure to clioquinol and anti-tuberculosis drugs. The discovery of NMOIgG has opened a new way into the research for the causes. Currently two principal causes are accepted. About the presence of NMOIgG some researchers have pointed out that some other cases could be perineoplastic. It seems also clear that lupus can produce NMOIgG autoantibodies sometimes, leading to some cases of lupus-derived NMO. In any case, the IgG generation is produced mainly intrathecally. De Vick's disease is similar to MS in that the body's immune system attacks the myelin surrounding nerve cells. Unlike standard MS, 
the attacks are not believed to be mediated by the immune system's T cells, but rather by antibodies called NMOIgG, or simply NMO antibodies. These antibodies target the protein aquaporin 4 in the cell membranes of astrocytes which acts as a channel for the transport of water across the cell membrane. Aquaporin 4 is found in the astrocytes that surround the blood-brain barrier, a system responsible for preventing substances in the blood from crossing into the brain. The blood-brain barrier is weakened in DeVick's disease but it is currently unknown how the autoantibodies cross the BBB. Some reports point to the metalloproteinase-2 and interleukin-6 as culprits for the BBB failure. Most research into the pathology of DeVick's disease has focused on the spinal cord. The damage can range from inflammatory demyelination to necrotic damage of the white and gray matters. The inflammatory lesions in DeVick's disease have been classified as type 2 lesions, but they differ from MS pattern 2 lesions in their prominent perivascular distribution. Therefore, the pattern of inflammation is often quite distinct from that seen in MS. The Mayo Clinic proposed a revised set of criteria for diagnosis of DeVick's disease in 2006. Those new guidelines require two absolute criteria plus at least two of three supportive criteria. In 2015 a new review was published by an international panel refining the previous clinical case definition but leaving the main criteria unmodified. Absolute Criteria Supportive Criteria After the development of the NMOIgG test, the spectrum of disorders comprising DeVick's disease was expanded. The spectrum is now believed to consist of whether DeVick's disease is a distinct disease or part of the wide spectrum of multiple sclerosis is debated. DeVick's disease differs in that it usually has more severe sequelae after an acute episode than standard MS, MS infrequently presents as transverse myelitis and oligoclonal bands in the CSF, as well as white matter lesions on brain MRI, are uncommon in DeVick's disease, but occur in over 90% of MS patients. Recently, AQP4 has been found to distinguish standard multiple sclerosis from neuromyelitis optica, but as MS is a heterogeneous condition, and some MS cases are reported to be KIR 4.1 channelopathies it is still possible to consider NMO as part of the MS spectrum. Besides, some NMO AQP variants are not astrocytopathic, but demyelinating. Tumefactive demyelinating lesions in NMO are not usual but they have been reported to appear in several cases mistakenly treated with interferon beta. AQP4 of negative NMO presents problems for diagnosis. The behavior of the oligoclonal bands respect MS can help to establish a more accurate diagnosis. Oligoclonal bands in NMO are rare and they tend to disappear after the attacks while in MS they are nearly always present and persistent. It is important to notice for differential diagnosis that, though uncommon, it is possible to have longitudinal lesions in MS. Other problem for diagnosis is that AQP4AB in MO GAB levels can be too low to be detected. Some additional biomarkers have been proposed. Currently. There is no cure for DeVick's disease, but symptoms can be treated. Some patients recover, but many are left with impairment of vision and limbs, which can be severe. Attacks are treated with short courses of high dosage intravenous corticosteroids such as methylprednisolone 4. Plasmapheresis can be an effective treatment when attacks progress or do not respond to corticosteroid treatment. Clinical trials for these treatments contain very small numbers, and most are uncontrolled, 
though some report high success percentage. No controlled trials have established the effectiveness of treatments for the prevention of attacks. Many clinicians agree that long-term immunosuppression is required to reduce the frequency and severity of attacks, while others argue the exact opposite. Commonly used immunosuppressant treatments include azathioprine plus prednisone, mycophenolate mofetil plus prednisone, mitoxantrone, intravenous immunoglobulin, and cyclophosphamide. Though the disease is known to be autoantibodies mediated, B cell depletion has been tried with the monoclonal antibody rituximab, showing good results. Several other disease modifying therapies are being tried. In 2007, Devix disease was reported to be responsive to gladiramer acetate and to low dose corticosteroids. Use of mycophenolate mofetil is also currently under research. In NMOIgG positive patients, the cause of the neuromyelitis optica is an autoimmune aquaporin 4 channelopathy due to these specific autoantibodies. In these cases, astrocytes are the victims of the autoimmune attack, in NMOIgG negative patients, or at least a subset of them, the cause is an anti-MOG associated encephalomyelitis. Standard Devix disease, according to the diagnostic criteria described above, limited forms of Devix disease, such as single or recurrent events of longitudinally extensive myelitis, and bilateral simultaneous or recurrent optic neuritis, Asian optic spinal MS. This variant can present brain lesions like MIS, longitudinally extensive myelitis or optic neuritis associated with systemic autoimmune disease, optic neuritis or myelitis associated with lesions in specific brain areas such as the hypothalamus, periventricular nucleus, and brainstem, NMOIgG negative NMO, AQP4 antibody seronegative NMO poses a diagnostic challenge. Some cases could be related to anti-myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein autoantibodies. NMO derived from an autoimmune channelopathy, around 80% of the cases, NMO derived from an anti-MOG associated encephalomyelitis, around 10% of the cases, connexin 43 NMO, aquaporin 1 associated NMO, idiopathic NMO, defined by the absence of all previous antibodies. Hematopoietic stem cell transplantation is sometimes used in severe cases of NMO. Currently available data suggest that this procedure can reduce inflammatory activity in the short term, but a clear majority of the patients will relapse within five years. Normally, some measure of improvement appears in a few weeks, but residual signs and disability may persist, sometimes severely. The disease can be monophasic, i.e. a single episode with permanent remission. However, at least 85% of patients have a relapsing form of the disease with repeated attacks of transverse myelitis and slash or optic neuritis. In patients with the monophasic form, the transverse myelitis and optic neuritis occur simultaneously or within days of each other. On the other hand, patients with the relapsing form are more likely to have weeks or months between the initial attacks, and to have better motor recovery after the initial transverse myelitis event. Relapses usually occur early, with about 55% of patients having a relapse in the first year and 90% in the first five years. It is possible that the relapsing form is related to the anti-AQP4 plus seropositive status and the monophasic form related to its absence unlike multiple sclerosis. Devix disease rarely has a secondary progressive phase in which patients have increasing neurologic decline between attacks without remission. Instead, 
disabilities arise from the acute attacks. Approximately 20% of patients with monophasic Devix disease have permanent visual loss, and 30% have permanent paralysis in one or both legs. Among patients with relapsing Devix disease, 50% have paralysis or blindness within five years. In some patients, transverse myelitis in the cervical spinal cord resulted in respiratory failure and subsequent death. However, the spectrum of Devix disease has widened due to improved diagnostic criteria, and the options for treatment have improved. As a result, researchers believe these estimates will be lowered. The prevalence and incidence of Devix disease has not been established, partly because the disease is under-recognized and often confused with MS. Devix disease is more common in women than men with women comprising over two-thirds of patients and more than 80% of those with the relapsing form of the disease. A retrospective study found that prevalence of NMOSD was 1.5% inside a random sample of neurological patients, with the MS-NMOSD ratio of 42.7. Among 13 NMOSD patients, 77% had long spinal cord lesions, 38% had severe optic neuritis and 23% had brain or brainstem lesions. Only 56% had clinically definite NMO at follow-up. According to the Walton Center in England, NMO seems to be present across the world unlike MS, which has a higher incidence in temperate climates and white races. Africans and Asians especially in Far East may have a higher risk of NMO, although the exact incidence of this disease is unknown, making specific conclusions difficult. Although many people who have Devix disease were initially misdiagnosed with MS, 35% of African Americans are often misdiagnosed with MS when they really have NMO. Devix disease is more common in Asians than Caucasians. In fact, Asian optic spinal MS has been suggested to be identical to Devix disease. In the indigenous populations of tropical and subtropical regions, MS is rare, but when it appears, it often takes the form of optic spinal MS. The majority of Devix disease patients have no affected relatives and it is generally regarded as a non-familial condition. Since the discovery of AQP4 autoantibody, it has been found that it appears also in patients with NMO-like symptoms that do not fulfill the clinical requirements to be diagnosed NMO. The term most has been designed to allow incorporation of cases associated a non-AQP4 biomarkers. Therefore, it includes all the clinical variants due to anti-AQP4 plus other non-related but clinically similar syndromes like anti-MOG-associated encephalomyelitis. Some cases with MOG and an AQP4 plus antibodies have been found. The collection of these conditions has been named Neuromyelitis Optica Spectrum Disorders and they are expected to respond to the same treatments as standard NMO. Some authors propose to use the name autoimmune aquaporin for channelopathy for these diseases, while others prefer a more generic term AQP4 astrocytopathy that includes also problems in AQP4 with a non-autoimmune origin. First reports on an association of spinal cord and optic nerve disorders appeared in the early 19th century. However, only in 1870 report by Sir Thomas Clifford all but created sustained interest of neurologists and ophthalmologists in this rare syndrome. In 1894, Eugene de Vick and his PhD student Fernand Galt described 16 patients who had lost vision in one or both eyes and within weeks developed severe spastic weakness of the limbs loss of sensation and often bladder control. 
they recognized these symptoms were the result of inflammation of the optic nerve and spinal cord, respectively. Similar instances of optic neuritis and myelitis were reported, and many believed it constituted a distinct clinical entity. However, some patients had pathology in other parts of the brain, a feature which was more suggestive of acute disseminated encephalomyelitis or MS. In 2002, Mayo Clinic researchers identified an humoral mechanism, targeting a perivascular protein, as the culprit for NMO and in 2004 an unknown specific autoantibody was found. In 2005 they identified the aquaporin-4 protein as the target of the disease, and developed a test to aid in the diagnosis of de Vick's disease by detection of an antibody, NMOIgG, in the blood. Some patients with NMO may be seronegative for NMOIgG, whilst some patients with NMOIgG may still not fulfill clinical criteria for NMO thus serological testing is now an important part of the diagnostic procedure and seropositive and seronegative cases are described in a manner similar to myasthenia gravis. According to the Mayo Clinic report, this was the first time a molecular target had been identified for a type of demyelinating inflammatory disease. Since the discovery of AQP4 involvement, some research studies have focused on targeted treatment aimed at anti-aquaporin-4 antibodies. The most established method for antibody removal is plasmapheresis. A number of drugs are being studied. Aquaporumab, Sivlistat, and Aculizumab. There is little research into the primary causes of the anti-AQP4 autoantibodies. It has been noticed that some cases could be perineoplastic. In addition, several NMO variants have been discovered with antibodies other than those for AQP4. Six different patterns of damage have been reported in NMO raising the possibility of five different types of AQP4 negative variants. Currently, the most promising non-aquaporin biomarker is the presence of the anti-MOG autoantibody, which together with the anti-AQP4 can classify the NMO cases in four classes, according to the presence or absence of any of the two antibodies. MOG antibodies are currently considered mostly absent in multiple sclerosis. Therefore, it can be said that anti-MOG is a group contained inside AQP-negative NMO. The clinical course and the response to therapy is different for these groups, showing a better prognosis for those in the nmo ob mog group, and a worse prognosis for those in the nmo ob mog group. The MOG-related neuromyelitis optica can be radiologically identified by the conus involvement. Myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein antibody positive patients were more likely to have conus involvement on spinal magnetic resonance imaging. Other autoantibody under research is flotillin. It has been found in seronegative NMO and some MS patients. Finally. Other proteins under study are Conexin 43 and anti-AQP1 though, as of 2015, there are only initial reports about the involvement of these proteins. The group AQP plus mog and is very small and it can be considered a coincidence of two independent problems in the same person. Assuming these cases could be verified, Currently five different kinds of NMO are being considered.